Hello and welcome to Guns and Gear. Now you know I've made a few videos talking about the defensive rifle. Talking about the ideal of the American rifleman and what that means to me. You know, my father raised me to be a rifleman and that's what I am. I'm first and foremost a rifleman. Uh, you've seen many videos of me talking about handguns and shotguns and they all have their place. But like my father, and like many of the individuals in my family, I think the rifle is the most important arm that a citizen can own in this country. It is an outstanding example of what the Second Amendment was intended. Now, don't get me wrong now. I'm not trying to put down shotguns and handguns and things of that nature. A, a, a handgun is very important and it allows you to have a firearm with you in your daily life. In many if not most of the states in the Union uh, you can have a, a handgun with you. The shotgun is a very versatile tool and can solve many many problems in today's world and it is an outstanding fight stopper when used within the parameters of the of its power and as a home defense tool it is king in my opinion but when I talk about the rifle and I talk about uh, the defensive rifle I'm not talking about home defense as more I'm talking about a expanded role for defense and I've made a few videos talking about these rifles. I've showed examples of rifles. I'm going to show you some rifles that I'm going to be uh, making some more comprehensive videos uh, in the near future. More modern defensive rifles. You know, I've made a few videos and I've showed some great old war horses, right? I've showed uh, Springfield Armory 1903A3. I've showed uh, Mosin the Gaunt. I've showed the uh, British uh, Lee Enfield rifle. Uh, I believe I've showed my Mauser and, and a few others. These are outstanding old war horses. They're World War I technology. Okay. And um, whereas they may not be optimum choices for a defensive rifle, they can certainly be pressed into that service today. Uh, other rifles like the, the M1 Garand, the M1 Carbine, the SKS, and rifles of that nature, they still don't fill the bill for what we should look for in a modern day defensive rifle, but they certainly can do the job if they're pressed into service. So I'm going to be making some videos and talking about more of these modern rifles. You know, and I've showed quite a few of them over the time. Uh, I've showed this rifle quite a few times. This is a para ordnance TTR. It's an AR-15 type of rifle, but because of the gas system it uses, it allows for the folding stock. Outstanding rifle, and it's my understanding that uh, para ordnance is not making the rifle anymore, which is a shame, because it is an outstanding design. This rifle has been very, very good. You'll see that I have an aim point on here now. I don't have the EOTech. The EOTech has failed me a couple of times. And uh, I'll never consider an EOTech for my defensive rifle again. Another rifle that, just a top shelf AR-15, this is by Sabre Defense. The rifles that I'm going to be showing you are production rifles. Okay, they're production rifles. I may get into later on some of the rifles that I, uh, ARs that I've put together, and I've put together a, a couple of dozen uh, ARs over time, uh, building them from parts and things of that nature. But I wanted to make some videos and show you all some rifles that you can go into a store and buy. Okay, this Saber Defense is an available rifle. This is the Competition Deluxe. It has an 18-inch uh, fluted match barrel has the best trigger of any AR-15 I've ever gotten out of the box. Uh, this used to have a Trigicon a variable scope on there, but now you see this new Leopold scope. It's called the Hammer. It is a fixed four-power scope. It has a rectical set for 5.56. It's outstanding optic. It's much clearer than the Trigicon. Uh, e excellent glass. And it's also an illuminated optic. 
another rifle that y'all seen, and that is the SIG 556. There's something about this rifle I've always liked. I just like the way it shoots. You know, uh, some people don't like the uh, gas system adding a lot of forward weight. And I have to tell you that that hasn't really been that much of an issue to me. Also amazes me that some of these same people that complain about the forward weight will buy a, a, a gas impingement gun, which is lighter in the, in the fore end, and then stack 10 pounds of crap on the rails. <laughs> but anyway, this is a, a very reliable, very accurate rifle, and one that I'm going to be showing y'all. Now, I'm not sure that I've shown this rifle or not. This is an LWRC AR-15. And uh, this is an SPR version of their rifle, the M6. It has a 16-inch match barrel. It has a spiral fluting, which is very attractive. And it is a very accurate rifle. Uh, the optic that I have on here is an ACOG, which is an outstanding rifle sight. And it also has a rectical set for 5.56. And a surefire light on it. This is an outstanding defensive rifle. Now, another AR, which I'm not sure that I've shown y'all, but this is a Noveski AR-15. This, again, like all of the rifles I've showed you thus far, is chambered in 5.56 by 45. It's a direct gas impingement gun. It's a little bit short on the barrel. Now the barrel is only 14 and a half inches long, but it has a permanently attached muzzle device which makes it legal without having to do all the paperwork and things of that nature. Uh, this muzzle device has been pinned into place by the manufacturer. So it's not considered a, an SBR. Noveski is uh, my favorite brand of AR-15. They just uh, do a top-notch job with their rifles, uh, and I have thoroughly have enjoyed the ones that I have. Now, some folks like uh, more a higher power chambering than 5.56 or 7.62 by 39 or 5.45 by 39 AK-74 round. And therefore, a lot of folks will, will lean towards guns like uh, the Springfield Armory M1A, the FN, FAL, uh, and AR-10 types of rifles. And I got a couple of these AR-10 types of rifles that I want to show you now. I, I know I've showed this rifle before. This is the SIG uh, 716. It's a 16-inch uh, AR-10 type of rifle chambered in 308 Winchester, 7.62 NATO. And uh, this is just an outstanding rifle. You know, there have been some folks that uh, complain that some of the AR-10s are not uh, as durable as they should be. That's not the case with this rifle. And I've taken this rifle through an advanced carbine class, and uh, it performed very well. No misfeeds, no hiccups of any kind. And it's right accurate. One of the reasons why I put that Trigicon scope on here that used to be on that Sabre defense rifle. Now I know what you folks are thinking. That, man, all this guy's going to show us is ARs and things of that nature. Now I have other rifles I'm going to show you. These are ones that I brought out. Uh, of course, I'm going to have to show you all some AKs. Uh, this happens to be an Arsenal AK-74. A Sega manufacturer and it's an outstanding gun I gotta tell you really don't know a great deal about the AK-74 or the 5.45 by 39 that it shoots I happened a few years back to come into uh, a uh, good amount of the ammunition very cheap and uh, I got the ammunition even though I didn't have a rifle to shoot it so after that, I had to get this rifle, and I really didn't do anything with it. Got a few magazines for it, and, you know, basically kind of stuck it in the safe and never really, never really messed with it. Well, not long back, I broke open one of those spam cans of 5.45 by 39, and I began to shoot this rifle some. 
And I gotta tell you, this uh, Sega uh, Arsenal, <laughs> it's an outstanding shooting gun. I really like it. You know, y'all seen some of my other AKs, like my uh, uh, Krebs Custom AK. And I have an Arsenal 7.62 by 39, and with this rifle right here, it kind of rounds out some of my AKs. And I've got to tell you, they're great, they're great rifles. They're a lot of fun to shoot. Now, you'll probably see this rifle change. Now that I've been shooting it and I've been liking it, i got to get rid of this short four, uh, stock here because I'm right at 6 foot 8, and that's an awfully short stock. And I'll probably make some other changes to it, but... Uh, Look forward to doing a, a video talking about this rifle quite a bit. Alright folks, that's uh, some of the rifles that I'm going to start out with. Uh, this is not meaning to say that these are the top shelf rifles uh, for you to consider. Uh, not, by, not by a long shot. There are so many good options out there, especially in the world of AR-15s. There's a lot of good ARs out there and there's a lot of okay ARs out there and there are even some subpar AR-15s out there. Uh, the guns that I'm going to be showing you are, are, are my guns. Guns that, that I bought with my money and I shoot and I have my own opinions about them and I'm going to share them with you. But by no means think that because I didn't show a particular rifle that I don't think it's good. It might be that I just don't know. Alright, well thank you for watching my video. I always appreciate you folks stopping by. And remember to shoot straight, on the range, and in life. Thanks.